I'm like a newcomer to it, but I have found it really interesting how obsessed with Star Wars native people are. Native people really love Star Wars. And when we were introduced to Grogu or Baby Yoda, it was like, that was in what year? What year was the first episode uh, season of Mandalorian? 2021? 2020? Yeah, 2020, 2021, something like was that. Was it the, before the pandemic? What was the first season of Mandalorian? When were we first introduced to Grogu? Because it was a it was a sensation. It was like it was a thing. Um uh, there were there weren't just memes, there were like people who you know had Grogu. Twenty nineteen. Like, okay, it was it was. It was before it was the pandemic. Before, yeah. Yep. Because the pandemic probably the first at least the first year or two probably stopped production like it did with everything else. So yeah, it was quite a, it was four years ago was the first season of The Mandalorian. And I just remember that year, like everyone wanted a baby Grogu in a cradle board (laughs) with a beaded outfit or like a Pendleton or something like that, Um, or like Grogu on earrings or Grogu like beaded into a medallion, like native pop culture went bananas with um, Grogu representations. And I think that it's partly because, you know, like Grogu and um, Din Djarin come back together. So one is... Grogu isn't a Jedi. Well, what is Grogu's race? Or what what are Grogu's people called? Do you remember? It's I don't think it's ever really um disclosed. He's he's the same race as Yoda. So there's an assumption that he has the force inherently, that that he he is force sensitive. Um, but I don't think their race or their people are ever discussed. So I okay, so that being the case, and there might be people who know the lore, the Star Wars world, um, who might be able to say like where Grogu or Yoda come from, but they code to me as indigenous. Um, they you know, like not every race in Star Wars or every world or civilization is coded as indigenous, but I definitely think Grogu does um code that way. And so like when Grogu and Dinjarin um because the Mandalor- Mandalorian's code is indigenous, especially in season three of the show. When they're reunited, it's like interesting that what we get a sense of in this particular season is like indigenous people coming together to like reclaim their their home, their homeland um, after it's been after they've been genocided and annihilated by empire, right? Um, and so that's kind of what all of season three the journey that they're doing together and they become even closer. And so anyway, I, what I'm trying to say is I think I understand now why native people really love star Wars because there's a strong story of resistance. First of all, resistance against empire. That's kind of like baked into native politics and like native psyche, especially in turtle Island. But I think also like Grogu and how Grogu was basically embraced as a relative, even though this is a fictional, (laughs) fictional, Fictional. I said this again. That's not a word. I said this once before in the podcast and I never apologized for it. I was just combining fictitious and fictional together. Fictional. It's a new word. I and love it. I think... No, I said this once when we were talking about dark winds. I think it was on the dark winds episode and I listened to it and I was like, oh God, this is not a word, Melanie. Even though Grogu is a fictional race, Star Wars is fictional. I think the reason why native people really embrace Grogu as indigenous is because Grogu feels indigenous and the story of the Mandalorian feels indigenous. And the two of them together is just the cutest indigenous pairing ever. (laughs) Yeah. And it it, it definitely like the the scene where, where, uh, um, the Mandalorian and, and Grogu end up, um, in that that area with the rest of the the uh Mandalorians and the armorer who's a central character and one of their children gets stolen and they call them the younglings um and you see Din Djarin step up to and Bo-Katan step up to try to rescue this youngling from these giant birds to me okay Full disclosure, I went really off on that episode because I'm thinking like, oh my God, it's the Thunderbird and then we have the Hero Twins and I just went way off into mythology. Whoa. Wait, so who are the Hero Twins? Is it... 
I was I was doing Dinjarin and Bo-Katan. Interesting. Because, you know, gender's not all that important to me. Fascinating. Because they, they come with this child seeking um, sanctuary, and then the youngling gets stolen, and the two of them right. immediately volunteer to go to and go rescue, rescue the youngling. Right. So you have this, this, you know, this pair... Um, who go and lead this uh, this quest against the the giant birds, and when they return, of course they're you know celebrated, and that's when the armorer recognizes that these two might provide the path forward for getting for for gathering all of the people back together. 